life. And so I say I'm a filmmaker because it's kind of true. I do make films. Um, I'm also the writer. I'm also the director. I'm also the editor. I'm also the producer. But that's when it starts getting funny because that looks odd on the end credits of a movie. It's like me, 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 <laughs> me. <laughs> but it just happens to be true, unfortunately. You know, but uh, I, I found new ways of putting my name on where I pretend I was a company. So in the early days, I used to call myself JC Image. So it would be, mm -hmm. well, John produced it, but JC Image did the effects. And, you know, it's just another like, way of putting like my it. name on. Like that's it. kind of a, if you want to get into sort of the negatives, unfortunately, there's quite a few negatives when it comes to indie filmmakers. And I've got a lot of thoughts on that. Um, cool. And I don't know if you want to hear any of that or whatever, but yeah, yeah, it, it's a case absolutely. of, um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting the field you're going into now. And I think, th I think your, your timing is quite good, actually, to be honest with you, because I think that what with lockdown and, and everything like that and the growth of smartphones and how everyone is actually doing their own movies and stuff like this, it's a good thing. Um, but there's also a, a, another side to it. And so my criticism of my brethren would be the ego side of it, I think. Mm. I think there's quite a lot of this kind of, um, I, I, I've had DMs from filmmakers, watch my movie. And I go, oh yeah, well, let me have a look. And then I have to sift through five minutes of their telling me that they've made it. So the film will start. I present, it's written by me, it's directed by me, it stars me. And I put up the money for it. And I've had to tell people, I said, your movie's not bad, but try and limit the amount of times. Because believe me, mm. people will search for who made it. If it's really good, people are going to find out who made it. You don't need a logo. And then you present the movie, but you've also made it and you're presenting it and you've written it. So I, I think there's extraordinary egos. Um, and unfortunately, my whole take on it all is that the camera never lies, you see. And... Mm you've got to make a movie that you're proud of sure not oh how can this turn me into the next ksi or anything like that mm. i see a lot of people making stuff and content or whatever it is in movies without really respecting the movie itself they they rush from project to project because they want to create a library of material behind them without necessarily the quality. And it's the old adage, you know, quality or speed. And I think mm. a lot of people will go for speed because they just want turnaround, they want content. They want you to know they've made it. And, and, and never, like the camera just doesn't lie. It sees what it sees. And one of the important things of my new film, um, I don't know if you've looked at a timeline, but I'm currently up to three years on this project. Well, wow. because, because for me, it's all about I mean, Jesus Christ, if I release my movie in the first year, it's embarrassing. Mm. So I think the important ingredient to filmmaking, in my opinion, is something people do not want to adopt, which is time. Time's the key. Yeah. That will get you the best stuff possible. Incorporate time. Try and explain that to your crew or, or I don't have a crew, but um, explain mm. to your actors and stuff. What do you want? Do you want something speedy or do you want something so good? And it's amazing when you call. If you look at any dodgy movie, they all have one thing in common and that's they were rushed out. If you look at a Hollywood film with bad special effects. Yeah. Uh, so you've got, you've got a good movie, but bad special effects. Like, like those people, Cats was a quite a recent example of that, isn't it? Um, yeah. They rushed but, it out and they weren't finished and people were laughing at it. And they hired James Corden. So... Yes, yeah. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> no, but but with that, those artists that put out these dodgy effects, they're not bad artists at all. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the time given them to themselves to put out good content. They're I mean, if, if, if you if you look at again, if you perhaps want to go to like the other end of the spectrum or extreme, how many films Kubrick released and the gaps in between his films and James Cameron for for you know certainly in his early films same sort of thing that you know he, he would take years um to develop terminator or you know the, the gap between um i think it was aliens and then terminator 2 um 
could be wrong, but I think it's about five, six years gap. So you're talking 1986 to 1990, mm. I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah four, four and a bit years. Um, yeah, yeah he, he didn't just go, right, okay, I've got six months, let's come up with something. Do you know, that, that's, a, that's a long... No, you're right, 92, I think, yeah. Sorry, I've got yeah. my dates wrong. Right, yeah. Um, that's true. Do you know what I mean? And and it shows, you know, yeah. in, in every every way. So it's interesting that do, do you think, and again, this is one of the reasons perhaps behind the film dimension from my point of view. Do you think that a lot of that comes from this notion of this idea that's developed? And again, when I started talking to film people a few years back when I got involved in the first short film knowing nothing about the film industry and i was lucky enough to meet people that actually had worked on big productions even though they weren't always credited and they were sort of assistants to cinematographers or whatever but i'd meet all these sort of other people maybe either fresh out of film school or just younger you know mid mid 20s and i was kind of asking myself well okay what's what's the model what's the business model i think mean, you you've got this idea for a short film then you're you're kind of going hey do you have a thousand pounds you want to give me for my film or 10,000 pounds? Yeah, no one ever wants to put their own money in uh, or doing a crowdfund, all this sort of stuff. And again, the reason why I was thinking of the film dimension as in, well, if I'm going to make a film, I want to kind of control where it gets shown and hopefully I could sort of influence the views and all that sort of thing. But it's almost like the, the, the model given to you is you make a short film or a couple of short films and you chuck them out in a festival and someone is going to see this and go wow that's amazing do you have a feature film here's half a million pounds here's a million pounds let's go make your feature film off of this short film that you made and they're like well that's the plan you know this time next year i'll be in hollywood sort of thing do you think that and again i so many people i spoke to i mean i'm t literally talking hundreds of people saying that exact same thing because it's kind of happened in rare cases so for example there was that dude i forget his name uh he made a short film on youtube i think sam remry saw it and gave him the job to remake evil dead uh yes one. i know i know i can't believe um, i know what you mean and i believe the story was he made a short film and um you know, it was a bog standard. I mean, it was all right, you know, but it, you, it, it's those type of stories that people think, well, if I put a lot of content out there. Also, you know, there's a lack of focus as well. I'm doing my best not to main, name individuals. I mean, I can literally, there, there are filmmakers out there, indie filmmakers out there that they, they call themselves filmmakers and then they suddenly want to be something else, like a YouTuber or something like this. And that's proof that it's always been about the, yeah. the individual. Um, for me, for me, um, it's about the movie. As pretentious as that sounds, it really is about the movie because that will pay dividends eventually, I believe. I'll give an example. When I made BLT, and you can ask this of the actors within BLT, there was zero expectations. Like, I, the minute we were filming in the alleyway down London, there was no goal. There was no goal. I just need to, and this is where, you know, you can sound pretentious or whatever, but for me, it is the art. I just need to do it. I've never made a penny on a single film. Mm -hmm. Not a penny. I've never made any penny. I put sure. my own money in. Mm -hmm. I must be mad. I know that. But it is about the need to do it because filmmaking is not fun. It's horrible, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's absolutely horrible. Even the big boys in Hollywood, they, they have a joke that they do it so that they get back to the editing room. And honestly, that's the best part. When you're, in, when you're editing your work, I love it. That's what filming. It together. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But filming, it's really horrible, especially, especially what we've gone through recently. Um, we had a real, real tough uh, seven days of filming. But I'm really, really proud of what we got. But I mean, getting yeah. up early weather um problems people's mood or, or whatever complication y yeah it's it's a recipe for disaster isn't it really there are days where you have conversations with yourself like when you meet an actor or you're picking them up at the train station you're driving them to your house mm. i've just dropped my kids off at school and dro brought my wife to work 
they're not going to meet the actor. And you're going, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you hold on to some weird dream or s there has to be a self-belief thing mm -hmm. that, but you have to do it anyway. You have to do it anyway. But if you are motivated about becoming a YouTuber or the next God knows who, then you must focus on that. Don't, don't try and, because the internet is the yeah. worst place for movies, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's, it's a platform, but it really doesn't suit. Even the, the websites, I don't know how far you want to mention names, but even the websites that pretend to support indie filmmakers themselves, mm. they really don't. They really don't. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, sure. I've seen websites that host my movie, actually, and they're for filmmakers and all the industry people. Mm. But the minute you'll get a Z-lister in a project, conveniently, they staff pick that project. It's not based on merit. It's purely because mm. this stars someone from Game of Thrones. And that gets to the front instead of the, yeah. the, the little guy. You know what I mean? Sure. And it, as you said, it's kind of almost defeats the point of independent films, you know, because you can have this amazing film with, with first time actors and people just been doing local theatre or whatever and a pile of nonsense with someone off of the, the TV or as you said was a sort of Z-list of Game of Thrones or something and um, yeah and that's getting the recognition and you wonder yeah who's pulling the strings who's leaning on people and all that sort of thing. Um, again do you think that's a part of internet streaming, um, celebrity culture, YouTubing and, and it's the lines of, I mean, you already sort of alluded to it, the lines have blurred somewhat and people have filmmakers, people that are wanting to be filmmakers, claiming they're filmmakers, almost forgetting what they're trying to do versus, say, in the 1970s, early 70s, when they're just going out there, you know, the early Sorsese, whatever, um, taking people that weren't famous and they're just making the story they want to make and it's I don't care yeah. if it gets seen sort of thing and um now it's more like what what's getting clickbait and all that sort of stuff um do you think that I, I grew yeah, up so... at a time where I grew up at a time where if you wanted to make a film and we did this me and my brother did this you had to rent a camera from uh yeah a shop called radio rentals that was the closest you got to any way of recording yourself and filming or whatever even when i was a kid i'd get my mates and we would do what i called back then dramas because you couldn't record them so i was directing my friends to play halloween john carpenter's halloween mm -hmm. you know it was strange but that's what you got to have it in you and i think now it's more well i'll try that so mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of filmmakers well i'll give that a go and they, they don't have it in them. They don't, have, you know, you have to have, be a filmmaker from, obsessed with film. When I grew up at school, I was obsessed with film. And that was a weird thing in the 80s to be obsessed with film. Now, every single person's a geek and a nerd. And, and it, it's, as you say, everything's blurred. And the, the genuine loons who love this stuff are just kind of being buried and do it because they have to do it. And they love the work and they want to put out quality work, not, oh, I want to mm -hmm. be the next um, Pootie Pie or whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to be that, not, not, nothing against that. If you want to be that, then focus on that. But, but don't, you know, there, there, there's, there's a lot of merging. I Is there too many, too many films now? Is there too much content at the moment? That's, that's, the, Dressed up as There's a, film. a theory behind that that oh yeah, but the quality stuff will rise above that. I don't know. It it it's what it's largely what you said about how everything's merging, um, and there's a lot. There's a weird stuff that's getting celebrated. Like for example, a couple of years back when Steven Soderbergh decided to do oh I'm gonna I'm gonna do a mobile film myself, mm. and it's like oh you must you it's it's kind of like Jimi Hendrix bursting into a class of people learning how to play the guitar. And going, well, look at me though. Look at me though. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, it's, I know, it's, I know it's exactly a weird what you mean. Thing. It's a weird thing. That's our world. What are you doing with your endless abilities and resources, by the way? Instant promotion he has. 
Mm. Look at what we have to do to try to even get noticed, you know. It's, that, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's like Spielberg saying, I can make a film for a thousand pounds. Look how good <laughs> this is. Um, and it'll get a, a billion views, but it's not because it was a thousand pounds budget. Mm. Um, yeah, that's an, it's an interesting that's an interesting thought. What what would change? What would change all that if if it indeed could be? I think yeah, I've been largely negative about it, but I still continue anyway. Um, but it, it's a case of, I think there are some channels. I mean, for example, one one channel I found quite interesting on YouTube was called the Dust Channel, and they seem to host sci-fi movies. Yeah, I know, I know about Dust. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, and that's all in. I believe that's all indie, and there's it's, some amazing, amazing. There's some amazing art. things on there. There is. Depends what you mean by indie. They are connected to a mainstream studio. They fund it. Is that right? And it is a, like a feeding ground for. Oh, I project. see. Right. But yeah, because I did a bit of research. Because I was like, this looks too good. <laughs> Do yeah. you know what I mean? To be yeah. be independent, and they are owned by one of the big, big um, studios. I can't remember which one it is off the top of my head. But um, right. yeah, they've got money behind them. Right. So not sure. Not sure you call them independent. But um, but there's some amazing content on there. Absolutely. The, the, the best thing, the be like with BLT, I made that with no intention to do anything. I, I, I wanted to, there's a website, Vimeo, and when I made BLT, the big thing back then was, oh, DSLR filming. And mm. um, I, I thought, well, I'll give that a go. I, I want to muscle in. So I invented a story about BLT, yeah. stuff like that. And then I made that film and that was me saying to all the Vimeo came, well, look, at, I can do it as well. So that was my only goal. Instead, it played in an LA film festival. It played in a Florida film festival. It played in Italy and then in, in Australia. And that to me blew my mind. And that for me was, was the payoff, if you like, the recognition, the ability now to show my daughters when they're older that, oh, your dad's not that useless. He actually won. <laughs> best screenplay for something what mm -hmm. dad you can't spell yeah you won best screenplay <laughs> you know but it, it's one of those weird things where like with my new movie i'm not expecting anything but it's had nice response it's not massive mm -hmm. um we are crawling just to get to a, a thousand a thousand views on on youtube but what blew my mind was filmic pro who are the um software people that do the iPhones they do they they give you the ability to film they saw it and they loved it and that for me was payment that was like oh my god film it pro loved and retweeted my work I do think if you make something with passion and it's good it's gonna it probably will get noticed over the sea of crap but there may be a a, um, a Van Gogh thing you may die and then they'll go oh who is this guy sure. <laughs> he made sure. all these movies but it all depends on your motivations and what you're doing it for. I'm the wrong person to talk to when it comes to the business model. And sure. I do generally believe the world is made up of artists and then the money people. If mm. you look at BLT, if you want to know my attitude towards business, just watch BLT. It's very evident there what I think of. Sure. How long did it I'm take? Not, I'm not a hippie. I'm not a hippie, but at the same time. Yeah, sure. Um, no, I, I understand. How, how long did it take for you to produce BLT in terms of? Was it a day shoot, couple of day shoot? How long were the editing? Oh, okay, so that was four days of filming, physical, actual filming. Yeah. But a year and a half of planning beforehand. But that was a very surreal experience because I thought I was going to actually act in it. Um, I, right. I built it because I did a project years before that where me and my friends acted in it. And then because um, things were getting a little bit more serious, now I was dealing with DSLR photography and stuff. Mm. I thought well, this could be quite tough on me being in front of the camera mm. and, and stuff. So I actually reached out and hired actors from Star Now. I actually made contact with one actor, and he put me in charge. He, he put me in touch with another actor, and um, I watched three show reels, and they were really bad, really bad. But the one who didn't have a show reel, I went, I'm going to go with him because he visually <laughs> right. looked the part. Sure. And the most surreal part of BLT was the very first day of filming is the first day we, I met the actors. So imagine this. Um, I arrive in London carrying suitcase full of equipment. I know exactly where we're going because it's all been planned out a year and a half beforehand. Mm 
Mm. I know where the alleyway is, I know everything. But I meet the actors there and then, we shake hands and we're heading to the alleyway to film this film. And 90% of that movie was done on the first day, which is quite, is quite unusual. Yeah. I did want to restart it. I do have a habit of scrapping the entire movie and starting again, which I've done on, on my current movie. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Look into that what you will. I, I, you know, there's positives and negatives to that. Mm -hmm. But we had a serious sound problem with BRT. Right. And I don't know. I don't know if how eagle-eyed you are, but BRT is actually almost like a um, Hong Kong 1970s karate film. It's actually dubbed. The whole, I the didn't whole, notice 99 percent. Yeah. Well, I, it, I, again, it didn't come across. The, I've watched it twice, um, and I didn't, I didn't notice that. So that because I was, I worked the actors into the to the bone on that one because we. I basically said, if we don't do this, we're redoing it because the sound we had the if you look at the alleyway, there's air conditioning units blasting. Of course. That yeah. was going straight to the microphone. So all their audio was utterly destroyed. But their visual performances were great. Mm. So I thought, well, don't, guys, let's do it in alleyways is, is the lesson. Yeah, actually, we discovered later, I didn't know this, but that was used in Doctor Who in the 60s, that alleyway that was shot in. Um, but I didn't know that when I. I mean, it looks so as weird. As alleyways goes, it's it's very um, cinematic, isn't it? it, it, it that's the part. yeah. When, that's why I chose it. But there, there's a one. There's a few alleyways around that area. But that one you land on, you go, no, this is the one. Um, but yeah, so we met. I, I met the actors that morning, and it was very surreal. You meet, you shake hands. One guy, one guy was deliberately doing a Scottish accent. And I thought that's strange because I didn't think you were Scottish. He was tricking mm. me actually. And I said, let's go with that. Let's go with that accent. Yeah. Um, and then we met and we started shooting and it was hairy. It was very hairy because I didn't think, because you're meeting these strangers and you, it's yeah. all on you. It's all on you. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got friends who tried to make films before and the biggest obstacle they had was meeting others and controlling others. It's a skill. It's a skill. You have to have, um, I don't know, something about, you have to be a leader in, in that thing. And mm -hmm. um, without going too deep into the drama of BLT and, and how it was to make, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But we got a, a majority of it. On, and, and the guy who plays the businessman who's in my current movie, he came back for reshoots. So we were able to save BLT by doing reshoots. So the guy who played the homeless man, I only had him for four hours. So I've got wow. all his part. And then Steve Malloy, who plays the businessman, he had to pretend a lot of the time that Ross mm. was there. You know, right, right. So you can do that. You can um, you can fix movies in their editing amazingly well. Amazingly sure, well. sure. You know, again, what would you say is your aspirations for? your your current projects now where you would like to go what would what would help you as a filmmaker get to the point where you can make a feature film and ultimately you get paid you know that you right, make right. yeah and, you know if, if you and, and if you could all your dreams come true what what's what's the thing that independent filmmakers need that's not there at the moment um okay let me think about that so for me, what I've learned, because the, the most amazing part of filmmaking is what you learn about yourself, actually. Mm. It's what you learn about yourself. And I'll give an example. Um, you learn a lot of bad stuff, like, oh, why can't you let that line go? So you realize things, oh, am I a perfectionist or whatever? What I learned about this one, although the evidence was there in, in my older work, is that apparently I'm into CGI. And that was a thing I really got into on this movie. I, I spent nearly 20 years avoiding um, a software called Cinema 4D. Just didn't want to learn it because I knew what would happen if I did. Mm. And this new movie is a result of my worst nightmares coming true. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, and so it's what you learn about yourself. So to answer your question, what do I want? Similar thing to BLT, I'd love people to watch my movie and love it a little bit of recognition for it would be nice mm. um if it did well that would be great 
I've got other chambered projects that I'd like to get done. Hmm. Um, I'd love to do that. My favourite filmmaker is John Carpenter, and I'd love, I'd, I guess I'd love to be a director. If anything, do CGI as well, do CGI mm. for stuff. Um, but that's, that's my goal. And, and that's a good question to ask. What is the goal? And I think that is what's lost on a lot of people. What is the goal? Is it to become the next YouTuber or is it to, because I've seen a lot of projects just be abandoned. There's a lot of student projects. They do, they, they're given the ability to make films yeah. and then you, they just abandon them. And that's kind of crazy to me because yeah. they're so hard to do. They're so hard to do. Why would you, why would you abandon it? I, I've actually seen projects half done or 45% done hmm. and they just walk away from them because it's either too hard or they just don't want to continue I, with it. I've, I've, heard, I've heard that from lots of multiple people. Again, people in the industry that are, are doing this full time and getting paid about you know that we were six months into a project and it just sort of stops and halts or they run out of money and it just never gets made or um, the again the other extreme the, the first short film that i was trying to make just sort of fell apart because i had disagreement with the writer and what he wanted to achieve ultimately wasn't possible on on budget we had so that that just stopped but um, it's a theme I hear over and over again. It's just, it's not a surprise from actors or producers, directors, whatever. It's like, it's quite common that you could put a lot of, of your time into something that just never happens. And like, okay, on to the next one. And it's odd, isn't it? Because to get the ball rolling is incredibly hard. You know, the idea of finding actors and getting them turning up and do auditions, if you do auditions or agreeing to it is, is a, a huge task. Getting a crew together is a huge task. Finding a location is a huge task. Um, so if, you, if you've done all those things, you think, well, that's the half of it almost done, you know? Um, the, first thing, the first thing I do, which might be unique, I've heard it is a little bit unique, is um, I had a project that I shut down uh, two years ago, and that was actually gonna proceed this current one. And it was all because I, I met two actors that were gonna be in it. And I met them in a hotel and um, I felt that, I don't know what you expect from actors because they're, they're there to do a job, and, but I wanted them to be part of the team. I wanted them to mm. love the project. And if you don't give me that back, then I, I'm not getting any feedback and therefore I, don't, I lose the motivation for that movie. Yeah. And that's why I shut down the last film because I just felt, no, you've got, to, you've got to be into it. One thing I can say about the current actor, and, and he's become my friend for the new film, is he's almost virtually a producing partner. He's not, but he almost is because of... I'm on the phone with him every day. Every single day, even after our little meeting now, I'll be calling him and saying, and we will discuss ad nauseum the character motivations. And... and the relationship between a director and an actor has to be, in my view, it has to be such that, because again, another thing for indie filmmakers do, they shut them out. I'm the director, you're the, I've hired you. I've mm. hired you. And they treat them like that. No, I want, I, let's have a discussion. Let's talk ad nauseum about the movie, what it could do, what the character motivations are. And you get, honestly, I know, I know how it sounds, but you do get gold by, being that into it you get gold and you get the best stuff out of the actor by by them also being on board with you you know yeah. that's yeah, just yeah. it's not just me i mean the greats akira kurosawa he had uh, yeah. toshiro Mifune. they mm -hmm. were like they were like brothers almost they were just they made endlessly... like 15 films together or something like that yeah yeah and and, and Tom Hanks said that Robert Zemeckis did that with Forrest Gump. He said that recently. Robert Zemeckis said to Tom Hanks, listen, you're not, you're not getting the character. And when they started for the first month or so, Tom Hanks couldn't get the character. Mm. And Zemeckis pulled him aside and said, you're not doing it. And he said, I'll do a deal with you. I'll let you into the process. So Hanks was allowed in to the editing rooms, the whole process. Mm. And that that allowed they both found out who Forrest actually was. Because if you don't, if you don't, I mean, to me that 
you know I've I've not been in a situation to sort of allow that so it's it's all kind of third hand if you like but that makes perfect sense to me because if you don't if you do have that barrier in between the director the, the actors then it's you've just got someone then who's just an employee just a, a hired hand for the day or the week or the month or the year and they don't care because they're on to the next one but if yeah if they come entwined in it then it means something to them then how can they not give the best performance of their their career you know how could they not care enough to make sure it gets over the the, the finishing line so so yeah so why would you not do that um That's, it's interesting i've had, I, I've had, I've had actors where I've, <laughs> I've been on the phone with them and they said well let's talk about money and i'm like oh okay and i get it i do get it but at the same time, I'm offering you the chance to be part of something bigger than just that. Yeah. And I'm letting you process. But again, it has to be in them. The guy I'm using at the moment, the, the, the friend and the actor that I'm using at the moment, he just loves the process. Yeah. He sits with me. He sits next to me when I'm literally putting the film together. Not all the time, because I work on it 24-7 wise. But he loves the sessions, the ADRs. And he, he doesn't do that thing of, well, how is this affecting my life? Sure, I've, uh, I've got to go because I've got something to do with that sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were literally saying that right no, now. No, 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 as in that, <laughs> yeah, in, in, in yeah. saying that. Yeah, he's involved in the process. Oh, I can tell you, I, again, without revealing names, I can tell you I worked with one guy and he made life so... He came to the set combative. Mm. And I was lucky because the other people involved were not that and if they were like that well then your, your movie falls apart but if you've got someone boying up the production mm -hmm. there's a lot of dick waving so I, I you know there's a lot of um, I'm so and so and blah 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 and don't fight the director that's what I suggest don't don't fight the director because that's going for the top guy and it will fall apart it will absolutely fall apart and on on when you're filmmaking, everyone's tired anyway. There's yeah. no time for crap or mm, the mm. egos or whatever, because it really isn't about that. It may have been on previous sets with other people, mm. but when you're working with me, it's about the work. Don't bring the drama, Jesus, you know? Sure, sure. Because then, 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 then you're hampering the project itself. And then, then it becomes, well, what are you doing this for? Are you doing it for a fight or are you doing it because you want to make a good film or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, <clears throat> and I understand. What, what the project you're working on at the moment, what, what's it called and when, when are you hoping to, to complete it and have it, have it out there? And again, what's your plans for that? Festivals and... Yeah, um, so the, the, the film is called I Am. It was called Me Too. Mm -hmm. Do I need to explain why I can't use that anymore? No, no, I, yeah. Um, the, the, the pun was, and by the way, I had that first before the Me Too movement, but because of the Me Too movement, I had to go, right, we need to change the title. But the, the joke was, if you like, me too, I've been doubled. So basically, the film is essentially about um, what it might be like if you were to get a clone of yourself. Um, it explores the idea I, I, I've always wanted to do a double film where the main actor gets doubled. I love that. Mm. Like whenever I see those films, I love that. It's just one of those D things. Double impact with Jean-Claude Van Damme. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but I remember from my childhood, but yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Back to the Future too, done it. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's, uh, I, I love those things. You, you see them a lot, but you know. But one of the things I've always felt about those movies is they make the claim that it's actually a, a, a great thing. So things like multiplicity or whatever, mm. they make this odd claim that if you were to have a double, that, you know, you'll get twice as much work done and it would actually be a good thing. But mm. I've actually thought to myself, Jesus, if I had a double right now, I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> I just can't think of anything worse. I mean, just imagine arguments would never end. Yeah. Who gets to control the TV remote? I mean, it brings up such a um, sure. nightmare. But I don't think people ever look at that. Whenever you watch people that theorize about doubles, it's, oh yeah, yeah we'll yeah, strike yeah. a deal, we'll strike a deal. You're not gonna strike a deal. 
because <laughs> ultimately one of them's got to die and which one <laughs> um, well well but like my films so i've told you the baseline of what it's about but yeah I, what i can't tell you is of course there's multiple things what it's actually about so yeah. there are like blt you could say man eats a sandwich it's actually not there's actually multiple things to blt yeah so uh, yeah, with i am there's actually like, multiple things and what i what i want from it is It'd be nice to play at festivals because the idea, the thought that you make a project and somebody saw it in the cinema is beautiful. I mean, that is absolutely, although I don't know what, you know, maybe the, the whole COVID thing will disappear by, I'm hoping probably early next year. Sure. My movie I think, I think everyone is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you caught COVID, um, but I no, did. That, that was tough. I've been lucky enough to completely avoid it. Um, yeah, touch wood. But um, yeah, it's it's not a lot of fun for just everyone, um, and the impact is is pretty bad. Um, yeah, who, playing who, cinemas, playing festivals, that would be nice. Um, hmm. Some kind of I don't know. It, it, maybe it's that whole thing that you said earlier about would I get noticed? It would be nice if someone, based on the work itself, not shameless self-promotion. Look at me. The, the whole Jesus complex you get with a lot of these filmmakers where they, they put themselves in the, in the work. And yeah, Tommy, Tommy Wiseau, that whole persecution thing of the whole world's against me. You need to notice me, you know, that weird thing, you know. Sure, um, sure. But it would be nice if, if people recognise the work because I'm that quiet guy in the classroom who was never good at academic stuff but I was bloody good at art so mm. it'd be nice to be recognized for that as opposed to sure. anything else you know no because that's that is why you do it you do it for that I think yeah uh, and that's absolutely. probably why I've avoided the other outlets like it's probably why you're probably you probably think I'm a bit negative on a lot of the um established techniques of filmmaking like uh the online begging for money mm. and stuff like that. I just cannot bring myself to do that. I don't know why. Maybe yeah. one day, I don't know. I, I, I do know what you mean. And, you know, having been involved in crowdfunders before, it's as hard, if not harder, than making the film. It's, it's not easy. And I think a lot of people go into crowdfunding thinking, oh, it's easy, we just ask our friends and we'll raise loads of money you'll lose a lot of friends, <laughs> you know? Um, and yeah, it's, it's hard, it's hard work. And as a, as an alternative to getting things funded, it's maybe not the best one. Um, what I've it, done over the years, I have stripped the possibilities of any kind of negative mm. stuff that will stop you. That's so good. for example, I make my movies, there's no, crew bigger than two mm -hmm. because the more people that are there the more chances of conflict um i don't beg for money i do it all myself so if it is crap that's on me you don't owe anyone anyone there's no investors there's no you know i've stripped any possibility that will cause any kind of conflict and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing you can you can look at it both ways but i do think Ultimately, you will be seen if you're good enough. If you are good enough, you'll be seen. Mm. Um, what 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 I used to notice back in the day, especially around BLT, when I was thinking about getting a crew, uh, there was a lot of demand for credit. People said, "Yeah, but I want the lighting credit. I want mm. that. I want that." And I thought, again, I just thought, sort of, "Well, it's about the movie, and you will be credited. You don't have to ask mm. for it." Mm. I'm not going to say I did the lighting. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, sure. There's, there's a, there is this everyone's in it for themselves approach, as you probably would expect. But if you just get to know the filmmaker themselves and you get to know their atmosphere, you, you will get your, your dues. You know, there's no need for the combative ways things are or getting into contracts with people. And mm. um, I've often said to people, you can walk at any time if, if this movie. It's taking too long or you, you you're not contracted 
you can walk, mm -hmm. you know, and then you find people don't walk. They actually then want to be a part of this. Sure. It's a funny world. It's a funny thing. It's a funny thing. But another thing you might really disagree with me on, um, and it's difficult. I remember doing an in interview with these Americans who have students and they were asking me about BLT back in the day. Mm. And I said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm kind of against the major thing that you lot do. And they said, what do you mean? I said, film school. Mm. I can't stand film school. I've got friends that work in animation and the industry. And um, they were telling me, oh, you didn't line the person up. I said, excuse me, that it's art. It's not, it's you, it's, it's your rules. There's no rules. Is it, is it almost like, and again, this might sound to someone else hearing this, um, I don't know, a strange thing to say or a bit pompous or whatever, um, okay, because uh, as we speak at the moment, I'm not a director, but I have aspirations to, but like you're saying, because I've got stories I want to tell, but is it almost like film school are for people who are going to work in the industry? setting up lighting recording technicians film, but the filmmakers the 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 directors and to some extent the producers because they're supposed to be the the money people and people you know work into a timeline it's like they don't need to go there because what you learn there is not always going to necessarily help you to learn how to do something standard correct probably has a benefit but to be creative, to have a story, to be able to write a story, to be able to tell that story, or to get a million pounds from someone and go, look, look, we're taking too long. We've got to work harder. Can film school teach that? You know, I'm, re I'm really against. I'm really against uh, film school because I I've got friends who can't even enjoy movies because they'll cease a violation, and I'm like, sure. it it's not a violation. It, 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 it's again. Um, I used to do comics when I was younger, I would do comics. And, and when you do comics, you're thinking about the panels and how you compose. Mm. If you can do that, then it has to be on the way you say it, not what film school tells you. I, sure. I can't stress enough how film school is simply teaching a process and it's eliminating any need to be creative or think outside the box or whatever. And, and it seems that people violate it all the time. I mean, the 180 rule or, or whatever it is, you can see, turn on, I don't know, Broadchurch on ITV and you'll immediately see a violation where the way David Tennant is this way to the frame. So he'll be mm. discussing with a character here when mm. film school will tell you he needs to be here. Mm. He's actually right to the front of the frame. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're allowed to violate it. So why then? Why does that not translate to the indie film crowd? Suddenly it becomes that filmmaker didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. No, that was a choice. That was a choice. I was told off by um, only, only one person for violating the 180 in BLT as a violation when the character gets up to throw the banana. Mm -hmm. It's actually a violation of the 180. And it was a, this American dude who, who DM'd me, he said, loved it, loved it. But the problem is there's that moment where you violated the 180. And I said, oh, right, what did it do for you? He said, I was disorientated. I said, sorry, said it again, said it again. He said, I didn't know where I was. I said, oh, because my parents who know jack shit about the 180, they didn't get disorientated. <laughs> yeah. But, and they're in an alleyway. You, it's already established yeah. right from the off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was what's that classic man and Moreau um, quote that there's a scene where you, you, they cut off the top of her head. She goes, it's okay because we've already established the top of my head, you know. Um, yeah, what a what a strange, strange thing to say. Again, Providing you know, everything in focus and your lighting is okay. We had serious lighting problems as well on Beato because the, the mm. sun was the primary light and that went from we started at 12 in the day finished mm. at six, you can imagine the sun was going right across. Yeah, so as you're fit. And... Yeah, if I was to do that again today, if I was to remake uh, BLT, um, I would have done it probably in a studio type of controlled environment. Mm. But, um, yeah, yeah. 
So film school is a funny one. Yeah, uh, I think it has. But I, I agree with you. I agree. I think people join it because I think they think it's gonna. It's a stepping stone to mm. becoming a tea person for a runner on something. You know, again, it's whatever your motivation is. Yeah, yeah. If, exactly. if you have passion, if you really, as as you've shown now, you've said you wanted to do it. My a number one advice, if you really want to get into it, is strip away the drama or the possibilities that can cause conflict on your set. Mm. And whatever ideas you have, and this is a big one, this is a very big one. You know, when you were younger, you'd write the most high concept stuff ever, stuff you can't achieve. Mm. So I was raised on the A team, so I would write, there's an explosion at this point. Now, you can do that today. Mm. And I am is certainly going to look very, hopefully, very Hollywood. And it's going to have all the whistles and bells of a Hollywood movie. But BLT was, right, I need to make a DSLR movie. What do I do? I know, rich man meets poor man. And the original idea was a rich man goes around deliberately poisoning people. That was the original concept. Right. It's funny how things evolve. So a year and a half later, it was, no, no, actually, they both die. Well, how did they both die? Mm. Oh, how did they both die? How? Um, slips on a banana. So it becomes one of those things where your ideas will change and evolve and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but strip them down. If you're thinking about mm -hmm. doing the latest. And also, look at your ideas. One thing, one thing I've seen, I've mentioned it twice now, weirdly. I don't know why it's in my head. Hmm. but but look at your work and go well what is this like is this like anything hmm. because again a lot of indie filmmakers tend to do broad church that's the thing i'm mentioning again yeah broad church content it's all very kitchen sinky very kind of yes it, there's no there's no real like with my movies they are a little bit out they're high concept if you like no, and that's that's why I think I, I liked BRT so much. It's it's my it's if I have any criticism of ind not only independent films but mainly short films, and why I think a lot of people think they don't like short films, you know, unless you're like a really into your films, um, because so many of them, as you say, are kitchen sink. It's two people sitting in a kitchen or in a house just talking about stuff. Um, and you can do so much with no budget and two people. Why? You know what it comes it... off like? You know what it comes off like? I call it six form dramas. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I know exactly you have, what you have mean. people sitting there, they'll be at a table and they'll be drinking a cup of coffee. You came back late last night? Yeah, yeah. and the cup of coffee well, becomes... It becomes, becomes the, it, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not thinking. I don't know whether it's uh, in our culture, if you like, like British culture. I don't know if we're we're not thinking bigger. Uh, yeah. And you can, you should think bigger, yeah. especially now. The, the, what's yeah. available to us now with these smartphones and a bit of software knowledge and yeah. YouTube? I'll tell you the positive about YouTube, and it's truly incredible. It's it's a poison chalice, and it's also this amazing thing where. It ref YouTube reflects you back. Yeah. So whatever you're looking for, conspiracies on con coronavirus or whatever, sure. whatever you're looking for, it will reflect back and its algorithms are designed to keep you trapped and all the rest of it. But if you're looking at tutorials on filmmaking, short films, you get some great stuff, really great stuff. Yeah. And I, again, on, um, on Instagram, you know, I follow lots of, cinematography pages and that sort of stuff and they and they you know they first will show you a scene which looks amazing and then they'll show you how they did it and you know so many of them are you know that it's this amazing with cgi and stuff you know like the the room there's one i saw fairly recently the guy's in a room and it looks like it turns around like a kind of inception sort of thing and everything's falling down and he's walking up and then you show how they're doing it's like literally a broom pushing things along the floor and him sort of leaning down and you look at it how they did it you just think well anyone anyone could achieve that but you see the finished thing and you say oh my god that's amazing like it's magic you know so 
yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's, it's, as we see, it's got the whole conversation's gone full. Um, oh, hold on. The whole, our whole conversation's gone full circle with, it's almost like there's too much ego about the self and putting yourself out there as in your, your name, your brand. But yet the concept is underrated and under visualized or the you, low expectation of what you can achieve, but too much expectation of what gratitude you'll get or recognition you'll get for the thing yeah. that could have been so much more. And funny enough, you talk about full circle, that is a, also a heavy part of my new film as well, which is mm. the self, the self. What is the mm. self? Mm. So right now, when you're making a film, um, it's also about where you are mentally in your life as well as the creator of that film. So BLT, I was just going, when I made that, I was actually going through a period. Of, I, was, I, was, uh, I was ill when I made that actually. Um, I had a surgery for a condition. Right. And it's weird, that surgery made me rethink everything. Funny enough, the world has gone that way now because of Corona, mm. which mm. is everyone's rethinking the need to chase money, the need sure. to be working for the man. And when you're no longer a human being and all you're doing, all, yeah, but I work for this people and we got 10 partners and, and you're yeah. spouting this weird stuff. And I think what coronavirus did is it, it made people sit at home and go, these are your life choices now. These are the people you love. And these are, this is what you've done with your life actually. Mm. Whereas before they were at the office and they were doing that. So BLT was, not anti-capitalism. I'm not saying anything like that. I really yeah, am. Yeah, I'm not. Sure. And I was able to temper my psychology with the homeless man. So I brought in mm. the homeless man to counteract that, that the businessman, evil, bad businessman. Mm, mm, mm. And what I, what I did with BLT was life was the enemy. Life. So at the end, life says, you too done with your conversation. See you later. You know, yeah. that, that was the point of BLT. With I am... I'm very much questioning what it means to be a human. What it means to have a personality and how much of that, what is that? Are you a puppet of um, uh, neuro, uh, neurological chemicals? And, so, yeah. and I, loved, I loved this idea that everything you are could well just be nothing. <laughs> nothing but a societal Sure, construct. And, and you relive it every day. You wake up and you, <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm me. Yeah, 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 that's me. Yeah, I'm me. Mm. You know, mm. I'm fascinated by that. And I yeah. hope that my new film talks about that sort of, because the type of movies I want to make are cerebral-based um, movies, yeah. but that has to be tempered because that's a trait of indie films. Watch yeah. out. <laughs> you yeah, know, you, the sixth form, six form, you know, yeah, like I'm a big yeah. fan of old Star Trek, not new Star Trek, but old Star Trek and the way old Star Trek would yeah. bring up themes, bring up themes and stories. That's sure. what I love. That's what I love. Sure. Don't, be, don't be preachy, but bring in discussions. That's it, isn't that. it? It's, it's a very fine line between um, that which doesn't always happen or when it does happen from a Hollywood point of view, it comes across way too much as condescending or preachy and um they kind of almost take almost beat the 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 message out of it and yeah an example would be rocky one versus rocky four <laughs> so sure you got sure. rocky one is this story about this guy you know struggling it's very yeah. very nice rocky four it's a political statement it's america it versus is. russia yeah <laughs> yeah you, you have how actually you could say the exact same thing for the first Rambo and the four yes. ones, you know, um, yeah. same sort of thing, isn't it? It's almost like Absolutely. first Rambo is anti-American because, you know, Vietnam yeah. and society. And the, the second and, and third ones is it's America versus Soviet Union again. Um, yeah. Funny that, isn't it? I, I, I feel I, I, I like my work to bring up interesting facts particularly scientific facts I, i'm a big fan of science so I, I i pepper little things in there you know uh, and discussions not too deep especially these days bloody hell i wouldn't <laughs> want to do that um but and and 
you know what's great as well? I'll tell you the what one of my writing things is I love to write arguments mm. because I think the best thing a person can be is not is um not even by your own bullshit. So what I do, I write something that I believe in, but I bring in a character who will take that down. Sure. Otherwise, you're not representing both sides. You are. Yes. You're doing John Travolta's uh, Battlefield Earth, where you just want Scientology <laughs> out there. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Now, but your, your movie stops being that, and it starts being propaganda. It starts being. Sure. So I, I just want to discuss about the human. You, you'll notice even, even the way I speak, I said what it might be like if you were to get a clone. Not, oh, mm. my movie suggests what it is like when you get a clone. I will say yeah. what it might be like or what it might be for the character, you know. Sure, sure. No, I, I totally get that. Um, we're, we're probably going to be cut off fairly soon with uh, Zoom because you can speak for a certain amount. Um, fascinating stuff. I think we could definitely uh, revisit um, this again and we could talk for a long period of time on films, film themes and everything else. Um, anyone's interested in what you do, your future projects, is a place, social media, where they can sort of follow you, getting any updates, all that sort of stuff, what's the best? So I way? don't, uh, and this is a whole other conversation, but I don't do Facebook. Sure. Um, I think it's evil, blah, 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 who, whatever. Um, sure. But, but yes, I do Twitter. What's the difference? But, so Twitter, I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube. And and I guess I'm on Vimeo. Reluctantly, yeah. I have to re renew my subscription to them and try and get my trailer on there recently. But yeah, yeah. I, I can put up the links. Yeah, so Vimeo and uh, Twitter would be probably, yeah, but that's yeah. where. If anyone's interested, and sure. like I said, Tom, isn't it, Tom? Yes. Thank you very much because it, it's any opportunity my to pleasure. talk about. <laughs> no, that's great. No, we'll we'll do it again because I, I think I think you're you're spot on with a lot of what you've said actually. Um and again it's it's we we do this because we kind of somehow addicted to this this idea and this dream. Um so Yeah, it's um, about to, it's 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 weird, isn't it? It goes you are forced to wonder why and question why, and then you go, Well, this hits at the heart of humanity. We told stories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we're all storytellers. We, we just do. I mean, you know, anecdotally, I mean, culturally even, we just can't help it. We, we just mm. need to do it. And if you can do it but with some artistic flair and uh, interesting ideas, whatever, then wonderful, all the more wonderful. Yeah, no, to to totally agree. Um, no, th thank you for, for your time today. Thank you as well, Tom.